Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Star Trek 25th Anniversary. Uh, we are on this moon called Scythe that's opening a planet with 20, 20th century people. And basically it's gonna, due to a me thinking it's still in a war that's been lo that was finished a long time ago and most likely will annihilate the people on the planet and we're here to stop it. Wait, didn't do anything in that room. Can't say I like the decor. The Lukers did not leave behind many examples of their architecture. I can see why. Got to look at things here. This door appears to be very solid. This panel is designed to receive an ID card to make the door open. You are in a corridor that connects to three other chambers. This doorway leads back to the security lock and outside. This doorway leads to another area of the complex. James Kirk seems relieved by the good news from his ship. Oh yeah, and if you remember from the last videos, um, the Enterprise was hit by a computer virus when they did a sensor uh, sweep of this asteroid, so it was probably a defense mechanism when they were fighting the war. So far, this mission has been boring from a medical standpoint. Yeah, honestly, they shouldn't have brought McCoy along. He was not needed. As soon as this mission is over, Ensign Mosher is going to write his sister who serves on board Pegasus Science Station and gloat about everything he's seen. <laughs> Spock, deep in thought, analyzes the Lucre computers. When I retire from Starfleet, I'm going to write one heck of an autobiography. Fascinating, Doctor. I look forward to reading it. But that way I can finally get someone to listen to me. <laughs> this machinery is incredible! Are all your landing missions this much fun? I might never leave this place. Please allow me to concentrate, Captain. At least the Enterprise is safe. Unless the computers decide to send more powerful viruses to the Enterprise. Ah, uh, knock on wood. <laughs> Shouldn't <I> say that. <laughs> then we're just going to have to prevent that. Let's see about the keycard mechanism. This panel has a slot in it rather than a keypad. The slot bears traces of triphosphorus silver, and power is currently running to it. I am recording the pattern of this lock into my tricorder. Captain, with the 3K AG content of the surface rocks and the tricorder scan of the pattern inside the lock, I believe the laser drill can be used to fashion the ID card needed to open this door. Now the laser drills, the one that you see here. This is an ancient laser drill. A closed box sits on the floor. This is a laser drill control panel. These are display panels for the laser drill. These are display panels for the laser drill. This room looks like it was once used for some type of mining operation. Ensign Mosier scouts for signs of trouble, as well as glancing at the great looking laser drill. James T. Kirk, Captain of the USS Enterprise. Yeah, we just tend to do those boring ones. Huh? Dr. McCoy again wonders why he even came along. Yeah. Mr. Spock puzzles over the illogical design of some of these circuits. I'll take it from kind of something in uh, adventure games. If it's not bolted down, see what you could do with it. This box contains old wire and connectors. Hmm. And also, that could be useful. You look but see nothing of note. Looks like a museum piece to me, Captain. This is one heck of a museum, Ensign. Still a mess, though. Why was I even brought down on this mission, Jim? I'm a doctor, not a welder. 
<laughs> You're right, this is a mess. This technology is cruder and less efficient than the rest of the complex, Captain. Let's have Squawk use this keypad. We could use the laser drill on there, but I think we should use the highest power setting. Captain, the machine requests the proper coordinates before it may perform this operation. Captain, nothing can be gained by trying to force it around. These are display panels for the laser drill. They are still functional. Captain, the machine requests the prop... Uh, okay... The drill is unremarkable, except its aiming component is corroded and frozen in place. These are display panels. I used the key card pattern scanned from the lock to program the drill. It should now be able to make a template of the key card in... Oops. Sorry about that, but basically, now that we could use it, we'll need to use the highest power setting to get it there. As you can see, it has an interesting pattern on it. And all we need to do is put these rocks on there. You might want to have him walk away, but... Um, and have Spock use it again, but do not use 100%, otherwise it will vaporize a rock, and one doesn't do anything. You need to use power setting 10. So now... This is a key card made from the triphosphorate silver rock. Now we could can get out of here if I could click on the right spot. Now I believe we could use this key card to go through here. This appears to be the brain of Scythe. There are two identical but isolated computers that communicate with a third, which controls the launch of missiles. This door is marked with a radiation hazard symbol. That's kind of odd. Why it's a uniform, even though this civilization was kind of almost wiped out about a thousand years ago. <laughs> missiles of death and destruction. The Luker believed that you could never have enough of them. Sounds like us in Russia, uh, U.S. and Russia during the Cold War. This computer controls the launch of missiles. It is directly controlled by the other computers. This computer is marked with the first letter of the Luker alphabet. This computer is marked with the last letter of the Luker alphabet. The control center for the base. Computers and nuclear missiles fill the room. Dr. McCoy takes several deep sighs and closes his eyes. These instruments of war make Spock uncomfortable, but he says nothing. Captain James T. Kirk, fingering his communicator, wonders if anything else is happening aboard his ship. I should contact him. Ensign Mosier awaits orders. Let's contact the Enterprise real quick, see what they say. Nothing to report, Captain. Okay, that answers my question. I don't have anything to say right now, Bones. Why do you say that to Bones? I wish I hadn't seen any of this. Sometimes it's useful to confront the dark side of our nature, that which we might become. No intruders, Captain. I think everyone died a long, long time ago. I wonder what caused it. For people with emotions, Ensign, there are many things that can cause hatreds. And each new hatred breeds more hatred and makes the path of peace harder to find. It's easy to say when you're not involved personally, Mr. Spock. But when people have treated you like a second-class being because you were different, hate can become the only thing they can't take away from you. That is what started most of the firestorms of history. Well, gentlemen, here's one fire we can put out. Let's go to work. That's actually very correct. These warheads are not a very efficient delivery system, Captain. Uh, 
it comes to a point when people are harassed so much that all they have left is hatred and that's what starts most of the wars of history. I mean, that's what happened to Hitler. I mean, he was so scorned in prison and stuff like that and he just basically, he was nothing but filled with hate and started taking it out on others. Became a big bully. And that's how most of the odd bullies tend to start too. Who needs efficiency when the end of the world is everywhere around here? Curb your emotions, Doctor. They serve no constructive purpose here. There's nothing constructive about this place, Spock. It's an obscenity. Readings indicate an extremely high radiation level beyond those doors. It would be fatal to proceed beyond them. This computer directly controls the missile launch system. There is no way to interface with it directly, but the other two computers are accessible. This computer is functional and performing an average 1.2 million operations per second. Wow. This computer is functional and performing an average 0.75 million operations per second. That's a difference there. This one says. Welcome to Side Operations Center, Alpha Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 3.21 hours adjusted. Captain, something is wrong with the computers. They may be twins, but they are not identical. It appears they are out of sync, Captain. I have to assume the Alpha Unit has a virus which is using up an incredible amount of computing time. They report different optimum launch times, which is right. Given the elliptical orbit and the range at which they will pass Proxtree, the Omega unit is correct, but the window is very narrow. A variation of minutes will mean the missiles run out of fuel and fall harmlessly into the sun. Can you reprogram the Lucas computer to give us that time, Mr. Spock? Reprogramming an old alien computer is not simple, Captain. The odds against success are 10,221 to 1 against. Too bad all Omega here couldn't just take a sick day and miss the firing. Because the two machines are isolated, the virus did not spread from one to the other. If we could only bridge them. That's the hint. We got some wires here. The connector snaps into place. Take a look at this. Welcome to Scythe Operations Center, Omega Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 1.54 hours. Adjusted. The launch missiles will run out of fuel before they reach Proxtree. They will drift into the sun and burn up. So we finished our mission here. Kirk to Enterprise, how are the transporters, Scotty? They're operational again, Captain. We're ready to bring you back at any time. Bring us home. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Proxima 3 and evaluate your performance at 96%. Okay. You and your crew received three commendation points. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed. Outstanding work, Jim. As I said, sometimes it's hard to get a perfect score in this. Now, before I continue on, the next mission is the last mission of this game. It's called Vengeance. Now, this version has, um... It differs greatly from the floppy disk version because we played that one first before we got the CD version later. But in the floppy disk version, all you had to do is go to two rooms in this place, and then that's it. You don't do any puzzles in there. They change into a whole bunch of puzzles in different rooms in here. So this uh, 
the, this mission is completely different than it was in the floppy disk version. I was all parry for that because that one is a pretty big mission. Hard to believe that Earth came so close to the brink itself. Vulcans too. Both in the end looked into the abyss and came to the only logical conclusion. Logic? Humans? I'm dreaming, Jim. Sometimes it is harder and braver to make peace rather than war. Uh, why did they have Spock saying that? It says Captain Kirk here. Sounds like emotion had its part to play in a positive sense, too. It says Captain Kirk, but has box color. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'd like to bid an emotional goodbye to Alpha Proxima myself. Take us out of orbit, Mr. Sue. Vengeance. Captain's log. We are arriving at the last known position of the USS Republic, which reported that it was under attack 12 hours ago. USS Republic is the one you fight in the beginning in that mock battle. Captain, the ship's sensors have picked up what appears to be a starship. Minimal life support, minimal engine power, and only two life forms. One on the bridge, the other in sick bay. Both appear to be gravely injured. It is the Republic. Holy crap. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. I am preparing an information packet for Starfleet. Shall I send it or wait for you to return? Send it now. If a hostile ship arrives, head immediately for Starbase 24. Wait until we get back. No sense giving Starfleet incomplete information. If anyone else arrives, beam us aboard and raise shields immediately. That's not Send it right now. Choice. If a hostile ship arrives, head immediately for Starbase 24. You have to be careful, otherwise the attackers could still be around. And if we could do that damage to the Republic, it could do that to the Enterprise. God, Jim, what kind of butcher would do something like this? I don't know, Bones. We're too far from the Klingon and Romulan borders for it to be one of their ships. Enterprise to Captain Kirk. Kirk here, what is it, Scotty? We picked up a distress signal. It appears a trading vessel is having a wee bit of trouble with their warp drive. What condition is the Republic in? It's a mess, Scotty. Life support's functioning, but that's about it. I've done a primary scan of the Republic's systems. Main and auxiliary power is out. Life support is stable. I also read that communications are operable. Should we beam you back, Captain? Do the sensors read any other ships in the sector? Besides the trade vessel, this sector is clear, sir. Mr. Scott, we will continue here. Assist the trade ship and return here. If we need assistance, we'll contact you. You sure you'll be all right, Captain? Yes, Scotty, just don't take too long. Kirk out. Well, gentlemen, let's see if we can re-establish power. Jim, don't forget, there's another survivor on board. We've got to find him. Okay, well, I hate to do this, but I am at the end of the Let's Play here, so I will see you in the next video. Bye.